Mm, let's say. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wikipedia and Education User Group General Assembly. Um, I want to start off by reminding everyone, as all Wikimedia user group uh, events, this is under the Wikimedia Foundation's Universal Code of Conduct. I'm sure you are all familiar with it, but if you are not, please take a minute to review it. Um, I would like to start off by introducing myself and the other board members of the user group. So my name is Leanna Davis. Um, I have served as the chair of the Wikipedia and Education user group for, I think, like two years now, something like that. Um, and I'm happy to be here with several other board members. Um, Philip, you are to my left, so well, you just moved. But <laughs> why, don't you, uh, why don't you jump in and introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Philip. I live in Serbia and Belgrade, and I'm... Uh, I used to be the chair, but I, I stepped down and gave it to, away to, to Liana. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been involved in the user group since its beginning and also its, it's proto um, <laughs> uh, forms. Um, and I've met so many of you um, here, maybe some not. Um, and yeah, basically, I, I'm also... Um, someone who's uh, who was involved with the Serbian Wikipedia education program uh, since the very beginning in 2005 so a very long long time of uh, activities uh nowadays I'm, I work okay. mostly, I work oh, uh, I work mostly with um seminars of professional development for teachers so yeah I think that's enough for now okay wonderful uh, Zico, you are now to my left. <laughs> Want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Thank you. I'm Zico van Dijk. I'm a German living in the Netherlands, and I have been the secretary. And in this user group, I have I did a lot of uh, smaller things, and the most recent one was a logo for the conference, which will be a topic for our meeting tonight, or today, or morning, whatever is the time. <laughs> All right, Joao. So hi everyone, hi uh, members, board members, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm speaking from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've been the membership administrator of the Wikipedia and Education Group, I think, for almost four years. So it's been a, a very thrilling process to see our membership grow and we'll speak a little bit about this uh, in the presentation and I'm really very happy with the work that's been done so and I'm glad so many of you have been able to join us. Okay and Bukola I know your internet was a little dodgy today can you jump in and say hi? Hi can you all hear me? Okay hi everyone hi. Uh, good to be on this call and uh, I'm joining from the UK and looking forward to how this uh, General Assembly is going to uh, be like. And yeah, um, the special advisor on the board for the EduWiki um, user group. Glad to be here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so that is the group who's been working on running the user group for the last couple of years here. Um, and what I would like to do, since we have an official general assembly every two years, um, we typically report on our activities during that general assembly. So we put together a slide deck that let me try to actually launch here. And hopefully this will work. Okay. Do you all see the slide deck now? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I will walk us through a couple of different things and give an opportunity for a couple of the other board members to jump in here as well. Um, so the activities that we will talk about here as part of um, our General Assembly today are our membership since our last General Assembly and update on that. Um, talking about our EduWiki Knowledge Showcases, um, the EduWiki Conference, um, which we have exciting news about that, um, our hub investigation, and then our mentorship program. Um, so I will actually pass it directly over to Joao, who is our membership admin, to talk about our membership. 
Okay, so first of all, I'm sorry if you hear back noise, just I have work at home, so it's going to be loud. Sorry about that. So just very briefly, some figures. Uh, since our last General Assembly in 2022, we've moved from having uh, 223 members and support of 19 affiliates to having 444 members and the support of 29 affiliates. And thus, uh, this has made us one of the largest user groups uh, in the global movement. But there is a, a real challenge to keep people engaged and active in the different programs and activities we run. And if you've joined this call and you're not a member of the Wikipedia user group, uh, education user group, so feel free to join us. You're more than welcome. We have several activities and it's a very uh, thrilling experience for everyone that's uh, been able to join more actively. And just to give some heads up of things that are on the radar of membership administration as main priorities in the next cycle would be to change how we are currently uh, surveying people uh, for joining. So we've had the same survey for many, many years now, and perhaps uh, a review uh, would be necessary. And sorry, here you go. <laughs> and I'm also considering switching from uh, the propri proprietary forms that we've been using to an open source solution for this uh, membership survey. That's me. Thank you. Thanks, Joao. And anyone who has questions should feel free to go ahead and add them in the chat here. <clears throat> Um, so let me also then talk about the EduWiki Knowledge Showcases. So I see some familiar faces here among those of you who are in um, our audience. So our EduWiki Knowledge Showcase is our um, meeting where we bring together community members and spotlight their work um, <clears throat> and give an opportunity for learning and sharing to happen across different regions and across different types of education program work. Um, and so in the last year, we've had five of these um, focused on wiki camps, focused on an open education week. We had a presentation around the theory of change, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, we had an engaging uh, conversation around um, how children should be involved in um, Wikimedia projects and some of the sort of policy questions and ethical questions of engaging youth um, in our projects, which was wonderful. Um, and then fun and engaging ways. So um, there's a couple of different communities that are doing videos and games and things like that. And so we've had some really good um, conversations and we record each of these and post them on our YouTube channel. So um, just like this meeting, in case um, I, I know time zones can be a challenge for people around the world, and um, especially those of you who are joining very late at night or very early in the morning, thank you for joining us um, in an awkward time zone for you. Um, but part of the way as a global group that we try to get around this is by recording our meetings and posting them on our YouTube channel so that people who are unable to join when it actually happens have the opportunity to do that as well. Um, and we have the next one that we will be doing is coming up next month on November 14th, um, and the details will be confirmed soon and announced, but it will be on generative AI, and we will have um, our friends from Wikimedia Argentina who have been doing some research on generative AI and education that they will be presenting the findings of their work, which I know this is something that is affecting a lot of our education programs and should be a really great um, event. So look to our page of, um, on Meta on the education um, user group, and then the showcase tab will give you um, an example of how to get uh, connected in on the EduWiki Knowledge Showcase. So I hope that, that you all uh, can join us on November 14th. Um, and then the EduWiki conference. So um, when we last met in our General Assembly, we were getting ready to host the edu our next EduWiki conference. And that took up the bulk of the work of the uh, user groups board team for several months as we put together 
uh, this conference. And I know several of you who are here on this call were at the conference, are in this picture. Um, we had a wonderful event in Belgrade, Serbia, um, with about, I think, uh, about 100 people ended up being there in total. Three days of really engaging sessions and workshops. And um, I know there was a lot of uh, community building and skill building and learnings shared across different cultures. And so um, we, we had a really great time. For those of you who are unfortunately unable to join, um, let me point you to the program. And specifically, if you click on each of these sessions, you will see a specific um, page for each of them. And that has a link. We recorded every single one of them as long as the presenter was willing to have their session be recorded. And so we recorded all of these sessions. And then there is a link to the video for all of them um, on Commons. And then they're also on our YouTube channel. So if you were unable to attend the conference, I do encourage you. There's some really, really great things that were shared by lots of people. I know I personally um, have looked through um, a lot of um, a lot of the videos that I was unable because I was in a different room. Um, I have looked through and watched some of these videos and there were some really, really great sessions there. So I encourage you to, to go ahead and, and get the learnings from these as well as the ones that you're interested in. Um, and then um, the, this is the YouTube channel that has um, the list of all of the sessions there as well, if you want to just scroll through the YouTube channel instead of looking at the program. Um, so I'm really excited to say we have been working with our friends at Wikimedia Colombia, and we are excited to announce the next EduWiki conference. I know this has been a long time coming, um, but it will be in Bogota, Colombia, um, and it will be running May 30th through June 1st, 2025. Um, and um, the scholarship application actually opens today. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, the applications are due November 17th. So just the same as last time, um, there will be an application to attend um, or receive a scholarship. So we wanna make sure the people who are there at the conference are all folks who are focused on education and Wikimedia in our movement. And so if you are interested in attending, I strongly encourage you to apply. Um, you can choose a partial scholarship if your Wikimedia affiliate or educational institution can pay for part of your, your costs, or you can pay, you can apply for a full scholarship if there's no possibility of funding, or if you have funding from your Wikimedia affiliate or educational institution, you can um, you can just apply for um, an attendance slot and not and that will cover the meals at the conference and your participation in the um, social events and things like that. So um, we're really excited to to have this conference again in Bogota in um, in 2025, and so. Um, I look forward to hopefully seeing many of you there. Um, so I want to reiterate again, the scholarship application, you can find it on Meta on the EduWiki Conference 2025 page. Um, it looks like, I think Philip just posted it in the chat too. There's this, the straight form there. And it is a long form. It will take you a little bit of time to fill out. And so there is also information that is included on um meta that has the full text of the application form and i would strongly recommend you copy the text of the application form over into a word processor and fill it out there and then copy it over into google docs so that you don't accidentally lose your answers at some point along the way um, so we hope that you all can can join us in bogota and we really look forward to um to having your um your presence at the next eduwiki conference um, any questions about that? I'm screen sharing, so I'm sorry. I can't actually see questions right now. We're trying to address them in the chat, so. Great. Thank you, Philip. <laughs> the the joys of, <laughs> of when your, your screen is the one that's sharing. I'm also trying to let people in here and the other, my other screen. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, please feel free to add any questions that you have about the EduWiki conference in the chat. Um, but we're hoping to, to see most of you in Colombia in May 2025. All right. And then one of the other things that we talked about and we spent a fair amount of time in the last um, couple of um, of 
of years working on was a hub investigation. And so, as you all know, our user group is formed up of a global collective of people who are um, education program leaders in their cultural contexts all over the world. And our user group exists to share resources, to share learnings, to um, help each other across um, across different uh, across different programs. And um, one of the things that we are particularly excited about is figuring out, is there a way to do more with the work that we are currently doing? And so the Wikimedia movement strategy process included the definition of a hub, which is kind of what our user group already is. It's a conglomeration, a gathering of people who are all working together in a common area. Um, the most common ones to date in our movement have been regional hubs, so regional cooperations like CEE or ECAP or Eberoku or, um, hold on, I'm going to mute a few people here because I'm getting some background noise. Apologies if I'm muting you here unnecessarily. Um, and so that will, this is um, an opportunity to, um, to be see if we can make our user group into a thematic hub. And so we are discussing this in context with the broader movement strategy process. We received a movement strategy implementation grant and have worked with movement partners, including the Wikimedia Foundation, to try to move this forward. Those of you who did join us in Belgrade for the EduWiki conference um, had the opportunity to uh, to participate in some of the strategy sessions around this that informed on our assessment of the needs of the global Wikimedia and education community. We also did a series of interviews um, individually with program leaders all over the world. You can see that on Meta. And there's also then a theory of change that we did through some additional focus groups and interviews of um, understanding how we would change the Wikipedia Education user group into becoming a thematic hub. And that was published in February of this year. It's also available on Meta. You can see the link on the um, on the screen there. And if you haven't checked these out, I encourage you to do so. So the current status of things is we need to design a set of infrastructures for collaborative global work, such as a governance model and a shared identity. Um, but our hub creation has been paused right now as we lacked clarity on whether or not hubs would be continued and as we waited for the movement charter voting. Um, now, as you may know, the movement charter actually got voted down, and so there is no sort of formal hub structure in the movement right now. Um, but the WMF has recently published a new set of guidelines for the creation of the hubs, and the EduWiki hub is listed as one of the possible, few possible thematic hubs that would exist in our movement, and that WMF is considered supporting. And so one of the things that we will plan on doing more work on in the next board cycle, so in the next two years here, is figuring out um, how or whether the EduWiki hub should happen. Um, either way, we will continue operating the user group and continue um, providing the sort of support that we've talked about here and we'll continue talking about in the meeting. Um, any questions about that? Okay, I'm going to move on. And the mentorship program, this is Philip. Yes, this is the mentorship program. So yeah, uh, we, I suppose we tried to, we wanted to use this opportunity as well to launch the new mentorship program, which is a sort of a continuation of the uh, program that we've already had a few years back. So well, once in 2021 and once in 2022, uh, we had a year of break uh, last year and now we're continuing this. So, um, so yeah, basically uh, what, what, um, uh, what we're uh, trying to do is pair up mentors and mentees. So uh, there's uh, an application form. Um, as you can see uh, on the screen, there's a QR code, but I will paste the, the link as well so that you can um, um, apply, well, yeah, apply for it uh, if you're interested. So uh, basically, if you want to be a mentor, that means that you can help out um, 
different people around the world with um you know with your experience with you can share what what you've learned so far and maybe you can learn something from them uh, but also if you're not that experienced you can uh, apply to be a mentee uh, so that you can uh, learn from others uh it's it's not supposed to be too intensive but you can make it as as you wish um and the official starting will uh, start of the pro program will be in december uh and we'll do the matching in uh, in november so uh once the the uh, the 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 form is being filled up and we we get enough candidates i think we're, we'll we'll open this uh for a month um and yeah we, we plan two three month periods of uh, membership activities uh, mentorship activities so you can uh do these uh yeah, one on ones basically, um, and in July, uh, the idea the idea is to evaluate the program and see you know what we learn from it and hopefully present it on Wikimania. So uh, that's that's the the the, the sh you know in brief that's the timeline for uh, for this and you know I hope you you apply and and uh, have good conversations uh, in the mentorship. Sorry, yeah, I was having you. trouble unmuting myself there. <laughs> my, my mute button had gone away. All right. Thank you so much, Philip. Um, and if there's any questions about the mentorship program, please add those in the chat as well. Um, and then I think this is the end of our official slide deck. Um, so I am going to stop screen sharing here. Um, any questions that anyone wants to uh, to jump in with here, either in the chat or... Um, or as a raised hand question. Also, I, I think we could use the opportunity to share the link for um, voting. So if you are a member of the user group, uh, please use this link. Oh, uh, I should prefit, preface yeah. it probably voting for board members yeah i was gonna move on to that next philip here oh sorry <laughs> that's that's okay <laughs> um so so that was the like looking back section and now philip has jumped us into the the looking ahead section um so um so rashina do you have a question about the looking back section or should we move into the the looking forward section have another question yes go ahead so uh, what i wanted to find out was the uh, and over the last i think I'm you're breaking up a little i don't think we can hear you very well maybe you could put the question in the chat can you hear me now ah uh, yes that's much better okay okay so um i've been a member of this user group for a while now and then um, i wanted to find out if um, in the last two years, um, after the last um, board um, election, because I think I, you know, asked you this question a while ago, some time ago, about have, have we been able to merge, you know, the education projects around together, like which I talked about. I talked about um, reading Wikipedia in the classroom, and um, being able to merge, you know, education projects under the user group. So I wanted to find out if um, the process is there or is still the same the way it is that's, you know, you know, different. I'm not sure I quite understand the question. Um, what are, what are you, I mean, the user group is a group of all volunteer community leaders who are education program leaders in each of our different communities. Um, and so we run programs or like the mentorship program to help capacity building and learning and sharing across different programs, but we don't specifically run any kind of education program. We don't, we don't work directly with students. Is that Does that help answer your question or did I not understand it? Okay, um, I think the network was breaking a little bit at the moment, but I didn't really get that much. But what I was able to get was the aspect of the mentorship um, program, which, you know, like capacity building, if I'm not wrong. 
Okay, so it means that those education um, program and projects they do around um, the user group would help in capacity building. Am I correct? Yes. Mentorship. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. We'll see you. You're muted. For reason. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, so this is a little bit the question looking back, but as well asking for the future. So I'm still trying to fully, un I'm sorry, maybe I'm just dull, but I'm still trying to fully understand the role of the of the Adubiki user group. And, and if I understand it correctly, so what you do at the moment is is this, ex like sometimes this online exchange uh, and then the mentorship program. And then when it works, pulling together the Eduwiki conference. But at some point there used to be, in my understanding, more emails flowing. A lot of things moved now to Telegram, which for me, things are getting lost quite often in Telegram. So I was wondering, is it maybe as well a request or a question for clarification, if it would be possible to get the important things like deadline for the newsletter and um, all these like dates and, and, and links and stuff, not through Telegram, but actually through email as well, because it's, it's just really difficult to, to keep the track of the things and to keep full understanding what are all the possibilities and services I can, I can sort of use. Absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great request and it's something I think we can work on, um, on being better about, um, I know many of us do use Telegram a lot, but email is still important to, um, to make sure it's a push notification to get it into your inbox. So um, it's a bit hard to share as well with anybody else. Like if I would like to, you know, sometimes it's yeah. information that's just not for me, but it could be useful for somebody else. But then it just gives an extra barrier for me to share it with the community when it would make sense. That, like it just don't don't take it wrong or bad yeah. as a comment it's no just... it's it's a great comment that we can do better about um it says bukola is share, saying that she usually shares um communications by the edgy wiki mailing list too um so it might be worth uh, double checking to make sure that you're on um on that list too which list sorry the there's an education mailing list in the broader Wikimedia universe, and then there's the actual um, user group board list. Um, so if you got an invitation or the user group membership list, excuse me, if you got the invitation to attend this event, you are on the membership list um, because I sent that email just to our members since it's our general assembly. And then I will send. And I'm an not on the list. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. I will. Um, let's let's sync up uh, offline and make sure we get you onto the the list. Then that would be an important step. <laughs> so great. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, oh, oh go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I will just add one more, and that's maybe. If, if if there are things in plan, like what you foresee, because some of you are I understood applying again. So so what, what you foreseen could be done or implemented, not only you as a board, but as, as, as a group, how the group can function. Yeah, I'm happy to sort of take that question and talk about it, but any of um, of the board members are also welcome to chime in here. So I think we want to, the, the major focus of our work in the near term will be pulling off the EduWiki 2025 conference in Bogota. Um, as I mentioned, all of us are doing this in our volunteer capacity. Um, and so, you know, I think we want to, uh, you know, make sure that we have a good program with great attendees and um, an event that goes smoothly as well as the the one in, in Belgrade did. And so that will be sort of the major focus of the user group board's work in um, in the next six months um, or eight months as we as we lead up to the conference at the end of May. Um, but as Philip mentioned, we also have the mentorship program that we're kicking off a new round of 
Um, we will continue engaging um, with the education newsletter. But yes, I would encourage all of you to submit to the education newsletter. It is only as good as the submissions we receive from the community. So, um, so, so keep up, <laughs> keep, uh, keep sending those, um, those sessions in. And then I think we want to figure out what the best ways to provide more support are. Um, I think the difference between um, our user group and a potential thematic hub would in part be staffing. Um, you know, right now our user group is a bunch of us who all have a program in our own countries that we're also running. Um, and so while we love education and we love this community and we're dedicated to ensuring that there's a global community of sharing and learning and capacity building. Um, this is none of our full-time jobs. And so we want to make sure that there is the space to be able to create that sort of global community. And hopefully a education thematic hub would have the budget to hire staff to be able to help um, move these things through in a more um, streamlined process and um, that we would be able to do things like, for example, we did the mentorship program a couple of years ago, and then the EduWiki conference sort of took all of our energy. And so it took a while to get it back going again. Um, and so being able to sort of provide those sort of capacity building things is something that would be wonderful if we could get the education hub off the ground and be able to have um, a staff person who would be helping do capacity building and support of the education community globally. That would be, I would say, the things that I think I'm looking forward to most in the next year. Um, but Zico, Joao, Philip, Bukola, if any of you have thoughts as current board members. Well, you summed it up nicely. I mean, yeah, we've, we're only volunteers. We, we've been doing a lot and um in our volunteer capacities and it's really um sometimes uh, it takes away for a lot from you because you know organizing conferences is not really easy um but thankfully we have local partners to help us out with that um so yeah um what we've wanted to do more is mentorship and and online showcases and and some other formats maybe uh that's always up in the air you know n nothing is set in stone we can we can change um formats and and uh but but here we're here to sort of uh facilitate this and hopefully maybe even become a hub um in the future but yeah to, to uh be the 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 central point of contact and and um and unity for for uh educational work so okay I don't hear any other board members jumping in. Um, I see a couple of questions in the chat. Vahid, um, I put a link to the list, which um, please do if you're not signed up for that list. I think please do sign up for it. Um, will the contestants vote? I think we'll get to the voting um, stuff in a minute here. Um, and Renee has a question about the future for the reading Wikipedia in the classroom. Um, I don't have a, I'm not quite sure what the, current status of that is. I mean, I can say there's a lot of incredible materials that have been developed and an extensive program and individual um, affiliates are welcome to take that and run with it Um, apply for if you're looking for funding applying for grants through the regional grants committees of the foundation um, to run the reading Wikipedia in the classroom um, program in your cultural context. Um, and in terms of French speaking communities, I will say, I think that is one downside of our user group is we are definitely English focused and English centric. Um, and I don't have as as a volunteer group that has no budget, I don't know. Um, I don't know that we have a lot of capacity to provide um, translation, but it is something that I think we're aware of and that I would um, and that I would like to, you know, hopefully address in the future, especially if we move into the hub direction that has a budget and paid staff, unlike this volunteer group. So, okay. All right. 
Um, Kirsty has feedback on the application text of a poor idea to expect scholarship recipients to share room from a safety point of view. Um, just as a as a heads up, there is an opportunity if you have a specific safety concern and do not want to share room, there is a button that you can check in the scholarship form to do that, but that is pretty standard across um, Wikimedia sponsored events um, in order to keep our budget to be able to be um, something feasible. So. Um, and yeah. Zico, I mean, I think Zico's point about the hub discussions did not make more progress. Yes, I mean, I think if the movement charter had passed, maybe there would be something to be said uh -huh. um, in context of that. But I'll check off, we'll give you a minute. Oh. Uh -huh. Hold on, I'm getting, I'm going to mute some people here. Sorry, I'm not sure who's speaking, but um, but yeah, I think it would be have been nice if we did have. Um, a little more clarity about the future of this, but these are big, important questions in the movement, and we want to make sure we do this um, and do this right. So. Okay. All right. Well, let's move into the board elections part of the event here. Um, so as you know, we are running board elections right now, or hopefully, you know, um, I'm going to drop a link here in the chat. Um, and so the board elections, let me walk you through sort of what this is. Um, and, and I will answer the questions that are coming in here. Let me, let me explain how this works here. Um, so what we set up as the process is there um, are um, an opportunity for candidates to nominate themselves for the board. And if we had had fewer than 10 nominations, we would have done a simple sort of yes, no for candidates. Given we had more than 10 candidates, we move this to the single transferable voting uh, methodology, which this is the same methodology that was just used in the Wikimedia Foundation board elections. So if you voted in that, you should be familiar with this. And so what this asks you to do is to rank candidates. Um, in this case, we had 11 candidates nominate themselves. In the interests of time for this meeting, we're not going to have candidates introduce themselves, but each candidate put a long introduction on Meta, and I encourage you all to read through it. Um, and so voting is open to people who were members of the user group as of when we kicked the election off. And so there's a specific edit that Joao made to the membership page. He updated all of the members. If you are listed on the page as of that edit, um, and that uh, link is um, right here. Uh, so if you are listed on the page, as of this edit, you are eligible to vote in um, in the board elections. Um, so how this works is a single transferable vote. So here is the voting page. All 11 candidates are listed in alphabetical order. And so you can choose to either vote their, their top five candidates will be moved on to the board. Um, and so, your choices are you can vote for one person and then not vote for anyone else, but the likelihood of that person, um, when, if they don't win, then your vote doesn't get to move to someone else. Um, so I would strongly encourage you to fill out at least five and probably more um, to rank the candidates from one to 11. Um, so we do not have a budget and a team who can help us like the Wikimedia Foundation does for this election. And so this is um, a Google form instead where the idea here is each of you should just put one candidate for first, one candidate for second, one candidate for third, one candidate for fourth, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you want to rank everyone in the order of your preference for them serving on the board. So if there's um, somebody that you would like to have on the board, but is maybe not in your top five choices, you would rank them sixth, for example. And so then um, if as people, as your choices get um, eliminated, then your vote gets moved to your second choice. Um, does that make sense? Are there questions about sort of the single transferable voting system? I know it's a little complex. There's a great article about it on English Wikipedia that we linked there if you want to take a look at it. 
or um, or if you're familiar with it from the Wikimedia Foundation board elections, we just did those as well. So hopefully this is something that is um, is at least understood in um, in the movement. So this voting is open um, for anyone who is a member of the um, the user group board, and it, you can do it today or you can do it tomorrow. So you're welcome to vote right now. The form is accepting votes. Um, you are also welcome to vote through, um, what did we say? Actually, hold on, let me say what I actually, what we actually wrote in this form. Um, like 24 hours? 24 hours, yeah, for 24 hours following the General Assembly. So when we close the General Assembly here for 24 hours after this point, you will have the opportunity to submit your vote and um, we will calculate the results then and share them um, to the membership and post them on Meta. So did that answer all of the questions or if there's any additional questions, um, you can put them in the uh, chat now. Uh, hello, Linda, can you hear me? Hi, Suyash, yeah, go ahead. Hi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I, I, I was unable to find the, you know, hand raise button, but okay, I just wanted to, uh, one clarification, like, uh, uh, as you say, mentioned that there are 10 candidates and uh, uh, maybe people, maybe uh, some some people are new to this voting system. So I, I have seen that multiple, uh, like, for the same number, let's say, if, if people don't know uh, or don't want to consider all the participants all top top five so can can they vote uh multiple participant at the same number let's say for candidate number one two or three can they vote uh, uh for number 10 like so you you put one candidate in each slot so one person in first one person in second one person in third so if you put two people as your first choice, then we don't know who your actual first choice is and we won't be able to calculate your vote, gotcha. okay? So please just put one gotcha. person Thanks. for first, one person for second, one person for third, et cetera. You can vote up to all 11 candidates. So if you wanna rank all 11 candidates, you are welcome to rate all 11 candidates. If you only wanna rank a few of them, if you don't know everyone or you don't feel comfortable ranking people for some reason, you don't have to rank all 11, um, but your perspective will be taken in sort of, you know, if you do have feelings about all 11 candidates and wanna rank all 11, I encourage you to do so. But I think this will this can be done only one time, right? Uh, only one like time. Yes. People, so people who made their mistakes there, they'll not get the chance another chance to reward, right? Yes. So. Uh, Thank you. But the Thank you so much. People uh, application. I voted actually, uh, but now the form is again available for me to vote. So actually, it should stop uh, me to vote, right? You already submitted a vote? Yeah, I submitted the vote um, because I didn't know just now the process. Now, again, when I went back to the link, it is opening again. So I can vote again if possible. So I we, just wanted to make. Yeah, I mean, because I didn't have you log in to, um, to do it, you would be able to vote multiple times. We will discard any earlier vote. So if you vote once and then you vote a second time, we will discard the first vote that you did and just calculate the last vote that you did. Okay, okay. thank you. And yeah, Kirsty says, watch out for the column order. Nearly did it in reverse. It starts from the left side as first, the right side is 11th. Um, and so you're voting one through 11. One is your top choice. 11 is your last choice. And um, Salako asks if we can just vote for one candidate. No, you can rank as up to 11 candidates uh, if you would like. Uh, sorry to interrupt. And Linda, I can see there are only nine columns are there, but the you know number of I candidates think, are eleven. I think you have to scroll over. Yeah, there's a horizontal uh, scroll bar. Yeah, there's a scroll bar. Oh, 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 oh that's what that. Oh, thank you. I, thank uh, you. That's that's okay. I'm sorry. This it is a challenge of um of using yeah, Google. Forms. There's there's a lot of challenges of using Google Forms, and I will apologize for using a proprietary system that is not really uh, designed for this. But 
um, with, <laughs> with, with no budget and, uh, and no support for this. We are doing the best we can with the tools we have. So thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't notice that. Uh, that's why I voted multiple uh, ranking to the, you know, uh, to multiple, like, okay. same ranking to multiple persons. So can I, can I re-vote? Yes, uh, yes, you can re-vote if you, Thank yes, you. Thank yes. You. And apologies for the horizontal scroll. I know it does not, uh, it yeah. is not great user interface. Um, so Thank I will you. be sure to note that in the email we send around to the members who are unable to join the meeting too, to just note that they will need to scroll horizontally. Sure. Yeah, Thank in the you. form is difficult. I can see only the four columns. Then just now I saw it is like uh, all the columns are available. When I slide in the phone, it is very difficult. Anyway, yes. I wrote it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, our our apologies for the challenges of this. And um I certainly yeah, welcome... I thought that... I thought I can vote only for four members. So I said they selected one, two, three, four. Then I checked down, nothing was there. So I submitted. <laughs> then just okay. now when I checked. Well, the... feel free to submit again and we will discard your um your earlier timestamp submissions and take your latest timestamp submissions for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Here, I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I want to ask if it is advisable for the candidates to vote. Yes, if you are a candidate, it, as long as you are a member of the easy group, you are welcome to vote. Okay, thank you. Shreya is suggesting we should mention it on the form itself. That's a good point. I will I will edit this form. Um, I don't generally like to edit forms after voting is started, but I think this is a good uh, a good thing to to edit in and put a note. Please scroll to see all of the columns. So, oh, and Bukola is suggesting we add a link to the board nomination nominees on the form too, which I think is a great idea. So. I will I will make those edits as well. All right, any other questions? All right, if not, thank you all for participating in this. Um, I will again encourage you to both vote in the board elections here, as well as specifically, I strongly want to encourage you to also don't forget to fill out your scholarship form for the EduWiki conference. Um, and let me put the, uh, the link here. Um, the EduWiki conference page on Meta there has information, has the link to apply for the spot, and then also has that link to the application text. Um, so just as a reminder, there's a page on Meta that has the full text of everything, every question you will be asked. Um, depending on your sort of tree of answers in the form, you may or may not get those questions, but every question that is um, that is there is um, is listed on that meta page. And so this will give you an opportunity to make sure that you go over and have answers for all of those. And I strongly encourage you to copy that off of meta into your favorite word processing document and fill out those answers um, on that page first before you start um, the Google Docs form. Um, and those again are due November 17th. Um, so it's uh, we have just under a month for you to fill those out and we would strongly encourage you to um, fill it out and we look forward to hopefully seeing many of you in Bogota. All right, with that, I think we will formally wrap up the General Assembly. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, and I appreciate all of your engagement and hope you will join us for the next EduWiki showcase. I hope you will join us at the EduWiki conference in Bogota, and I hope you will participate in the electing our next board um, through in the next 24 hours. And please fill up fill um, out the mentorship form too, so that you can um, you can join our mentorship program as either a mentor or a mentee. <laughs> So. Okay, Zico, I'm going to mute you. All right. Thank you all. Bye. Bye, everyone.